Bibles tonight, you can open up to 2 Kings chapter 22. Hey, that's, you can cut me down some monitor. I don't know how I sound out there. It's a little hot up here. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 22. Glad to see everybody here tonight. It's, Several of our regulars out for a variety of reasons. Some of them was in uh, Ohio and some other places. And uh, very thankful to have everybody. Brother Member Meads Church over here tonight, helping us sing, worship God, fellowshipping with us. And uh, it's a blessing always to be in church with uh, be in church with his people. Amen. Amen. And uh, uh, we're going to talk about tonight about being desensitized as Christians. And we're going to read this little story, and I don't know how hard we're going to hang in there to it, but God dealt with me on something this morning. He, he, he brought me down this little road before, uh, but uh, the pastor was preaching at Garrett this morning, and this stuck out to me. It wasn't his message. He was preaching out of Revelations, but this was a a side note, if you will, that he had went on for a while. and uh, We're going to read this and see what God does with it. Right. Chapter 22, verse 1. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. That's a little bit young. Uh, my little girl wherever she's at. I see her hand back there. She must have her head in her mommy's lap. She's eight years old. That's how old he was when they made him king. Don't seem quite right, does it? And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem at a maiden 39 when he stopped being king. And his mother's name was Jedidai, the daughter of Adai of Boscath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Off to a good start, isn't he? And it came to pass in the 18th year of the king of Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying. In other words, he sent up Shaphan, the scribe. They found it important to identify these people by genealogy. <clears throat> said, go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the war work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. In other words, in our terms, he said, go get the money out of the offering and the building fund and give it to the contractors and the people who know how to do stuff because we've got to get some work done. The, the, the church has got to be worked on. The temple's got to be repaired. Unto carpenters and builders and masons to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. How be it there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. In other words, they didn't have to worry about who was uh, spending what. Everybody was honest. Now, this is where it gets real interesting. So, let me set this up. We've got this young king who's doing right by God. And he's doing everything that he knows how to do. Amen? And so they start working on the house of God like that they see needs to be done. Right? Okay. We can all relate to that. That's how we serve God, ain't it, Brother Josh? We, we just doing the best we know how to do. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Boy, there's a novel idea. 
Somebody actually decided to read it instead of leaving it stuck in a corner. What's that old song that's dust on the Bible? Yeah. Come on. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered into the hand of them that do the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king saying, Hilkiah the high priest delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. So now it ain't just Shaphan who knows the law, but it's Josiah who knows the law. See, Josiah was doing everything that he knew how to do before. But he didn't have the book of the law. But now he's had the book of the law. And it came to pass... When the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Now, that's the equivalent of me and you going, Oh, Lord, this is bad. For some reason, they thought it was prudent to stand up and rip a hole in their shirt. That's what they've done. They've done it all the way through the Bible. Something would go wrong, somebody would stand up and tear their clothes. Well, that's the same thing as us wailing and crying. Have you ever done something or heard something or got news where you reacted so strongly that you cried out? Yes, sir. That you hit the ground? I remember my daddy had a real bad wreck back in 1999 and my brother called me on the phone to tell me about the wreck and the only thing I got on the other end of the phone was, ah, 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 ah. and I mean, he was just going off the deep end. I, I managed to get enough out of there to understand dad had been a wreck and then somebody in the other vehicle was pregnant and it was about as good and they were flying him out. That's about as good as I got. And see, that was the same thing that old Josiah felt when he heard the law. He was disturbed, plumbed down inside of him, and he stood up and he ran his clothes because he knew automatically, Josh, that he wasn't doing everything that God had required of him. Oh, he was doing all he knew to do. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and, uh, and Ahakim the son of Shaphan and Akbor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Ashiah a servant of the kings, saying, Go ye inquire of the Lord for me, for the, poor, for the people and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So Hilkiah, do you see that? Josiah said, man, I was doing all I knew to do, but my family before me had laid a tradition in which was not correct. Hey, Amen? Y'all going to have to get on board. We're going somewhere with this. It ain't going to be pretty either. So Hilkiah the priest... And, and, and Ahakim and Akbor and Shaphan and Ashai went to Hilda or Hulda the prophetess. Uh oh. Boy, that just makes us uncomfortable. But that right there was a woman of God. It was a woman. A prophetess. The next two words says the wife. Amen. They recognized her. In a, in, a, in a country ruled by men, in a priest ruled, in a priesthood ruled by men, they recognized this woman as a woman of God, Sister Brittany. A prophetess. They said, she'll know the answer. The wife of Shalem, the son of Tikval, the son of Harus, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, in other words, Josiah, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, 
Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes, and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into the grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Brother Josh, would you ask a blessing on the message tonight? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for another time that you've given us to be able to sing with your house. And God, we pray for this a passage of scripture, God, that you would begin to bless. God, that you would work works tonight. God, that only you can work. I pray, God, for my brother. God, the great anointing to fall tonight. God, that you'd be able to bless him. Uh, God, to feed our soul tonight with what you would have us to hear. Uh, uh, God, help us to receive it in their heart. Uh, and not just be hearers of the word, but to be doers also. We glorify you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With the help of the Lord, we're going to talk about three things tonight. We're going to talk about how that we've fallen into tradition. We're going to talk about how that we overlook sin. Glory to God. And we're going to talk about cleaning up the house of God. Amen. We're going to talk about reading that book of the law. We were sitting studying neurology down at Auburn in vet school and. Uh, we were talking about nerve endings. And you got nerve endings all over your body. And, 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 and if I touch you, you feel it. Amen? But after a while, once I poke you, if I don't ever pull my finger off, you don't notice me poking you anymore. You say, well, how can you prove that? How many of us notice what clothes that we're wearing? We know they're on our bodies, Brother Josh, but we don't think about them every second that they're touching us. We become desensitized to the fact that we're wearing clothes. We become desensitized to the fact that something is poking us and something is bothering us or something is wrong before us. And see, we've become desensitized in this country. And we're going to talk about desensitization, obviously, before we talk about tradition and before we talk about reading the law for ourselves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you see, we begin, oh God, you're going to have to help me. We begin to sit down in front of our TVs and we begin to watch Baywatch, Brother Josh. And we say we like to watch it for the storyline. And we ignore everything bad that's going on in front of us. And we've got ungodly commercials that come on TV and we don't channel. And you want to know why that is? Because we are desensitized to the things that are wrong before God. Say, so why are you picking on TV? Because it's easy. We all got TVs. We all watch them. Amen? We listen to music, and I'm not opposed to other kinds of music. Brother Josh, I grew up to my daddy singing George Jones and Merle Haggard. And you know what? That's fine. It's part of our culture. Bluegrass is part of the but come on, we'll listen to things in music that we wouldn't let our children speak out loud when they were young, let alone, uh, we don't want to listen to it themselves, but we'll ignore it when it's on the radio. We won't even turn it off. My little girl come home. Glory, I'm liable to get in all kinds of trouble. My little girl come home from school, and they had dance class down there at the elementary school she goes to. And uh, what was the name of that song, Kelly? Was it the Bang Bang one? Yeah, Bang Bang. Oh, have mercy. See, I haven't listened to mainstream music in a few years, and that's, that's fine. I ain't, I ain't fussing. But Kelly said, and she just ain't, and she said they put it on you they wanted the class to get up and dance with it, the girls and the boys. And uh, it come from a video game. And uh, what's it? That Dance Dance Evolution or something, you know? And uh, Just Dance. Yeah. And they, they got the, the people on there dancing, and they wanted the kids to get up and dance with them. Kelly said, I wasn't going to do them moves. So them people wasn't dressed right, and I didn't like the way them people was moving. Words to that effect. But me and Missy had never heard the song, because we don't get on the radio much and listen too much like that too much anymore. 
And Lord, so we looked it up on YouTube, some video they was watching at school. And I thought, have mercy, Josh B. What in the world are exposing their children to? Come and on. the thing about it is, it's not just at school, but I'm going to pick on us. I can pick on the world out there, but we need to pick on the house of God tonight. Glory to God. Josiah wasn't picking on people outside the temple. Josiah was rent his clothes because the very people worshiping God. Like worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Like they were supposed to be worshiping God. And let me tell you, and so we listen to that smut on the radio, and we let our children listen to that smut on the radio, and then we wonder why they're having onions before they become of age and get married. So God ought to get with it. It ain't right. If my eight-year-old has enough common sense to realize it's inappropriate for a young girl to act that way, then what does that say about the adult? See, preaching hard. We ain't done yet. It is a shame that men and women of God, glory to God, I'm just going to pick on us. Listen, if you don't want to get your toes stopped on, you just as well get up and leave because it's going to get ugly in here. Because there ain't nothing good going to be said about Christians tonight. It don't seem like because we have fallen short of the glory of God. It's a shame that Christians would let their children hear that stuff on the radio or watch that stuff on the TV or play it on a game because if it ain't fit for me to do with my own body, it ain't fit for me to watch it with my eyes. And if it ain't fit for me to watch it with my eyes, then it ain't fit for me to let my children watch it with their eyes. Glory to God. If I can't say it in a pulpit, We all like to use our little words and get a little angry now and then. Fuss a little bit. Come on. Come on. Me too, Josh. I'm guilty too. Come on. But listen. Josiah realized when he got down and he began to read the law of God that he was falling short of the commandments of God. He had followed the traditions of man as long as he could follow them, sister. But he realized all of a sudden that the traditions of man, Brother Scott, wasn't good enough, Sister Kathy. They had went as far as they could go and they had become desensitized to the things of the world. Say, so why are you preaching this? Because God gave it to me this morning. This is in no relation to anything else. Yes, I go to the movies. Yes, I watch movies that has bad language in it. I will. I, I'm not fussy. I'm not picky. <laughs> sure, we're only talking to Caleb, either. Me and him have a conversation like that. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> Glory to God. But it's a shame when we don't even notice the sin that sits in front of our faces. Amen. Come on. Come on. Me and Lisa was in Alabama. We was going to a homeless church. And I mean them old horns. Hard line. They didn't have TVs. I loved them. They was good people, Brother Josh. At the open like the spirit of holiness church. They were some good people. They didn't wear. They didn't wear. The only thing, they didn't wear wedding bands. They wore watches. It was the only jewelry you caught on. They had long bed and long sleeves. Women didn't wear nothing much shorter than a three-quarter length sleeve. They always wore skirts, wasn't no pants. Didn't have TVs. Women didn't cut their hair. Old time. Old time. Me and Missy had a great deal of respect for them people. Brother Josh, we went to the house to worship with them. We didn't wear jewelry. We kept the wedding bands on, but we took off everything else. Missy didn't wear earrings or necklaces. And, uh, we didn't, and I, I sometimes would wear a watch, but I don't often wear one anyways. And, and I would wear long sleeves, and I'd cuff it up a little bit. I'd wear long sleeves. And Missy, we respect them. And we begin to seek after God, Brother Josh, about how that He would have us proceed in these things. Because if people believed it with all their heart, and we wanted to know, Brother Mark, if we should follow that. We wanted to, you know what I'm saying? We wanted to get in and see where they were coming from. And so, time went on, and 
Our little son come along, and my wife had to stop working while we were down there. So for a couple of reasons, we had our TV turned off. One was because of money, and two, which should have been number one, because we'd been discussing getting rid of TV anyways, because we had been going to that holiness church. And so we lived from June of 04 till March of 05 without cable. Uh, the only time we see anything like that was uh, in a restaurant or if we went and rented a movie or something, you know? And so we moved back to my mom and dad's, and I ain't fussing at mom and dad, not, no stretch. But we moved back, mom and dad's got cable. And uh, my little boy was about eight months old or so, and he loved to hear music. And there's a couple country music songs at that time where he just, the videos would come on and he would just be glued to the TV. It was the cutest little thing he ever seen. But as we moved back, we began to watch a little TV, Brittany. And you want to talk about the shock factor of what we realized that we had become desensitized to before that we got rid of our TV? Come on, we, I, there was stuff come on TV and I would be like, oh my Lord, I used to watch that and I never even thought, Brother Josh, one thing about it. Language? Conversations? Not to mention the, the, the sheer appearance of people. And we watch it on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have because we have become desensitized to it. And you rewind and you go back to your old black and white shows. And then you march it forward. And I'm going to give you a little bit of you. all going to have to hang with me because I'm building this case for desensitization. If you go back to the Mary Tyler Moore show, excuse me, the Dick Van Dyke show. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Some of you older folks remember that. Some of you younger ones, if you watch it on uh, Nick at Night or whatever, and, and not, you, you know what I'm talking about. Well, that first season, and that come out in the, well, the 50s, I guess it was. They are about some of the 60s anyways. And the first season of that, Mary Tyler Moore wore capris in just about every scene in every episode. And I'm not preaching against pants. I'm going somewhere with this. Hang on. The populace, the people watching the shows, actually throw a fit enough that the next seasons, they put her in a skirt in every scene but one in every episode. Even though she was home, a stay-at-home mom, and not working, the women of that time related to wearing skirts all the time and not wearing capris or pants. And they were offended by the fact that she wore capris all the time. Now, I'm not preaching on pants. I'm going somewhere. Now, don't you think that if they were offended by capris, that they would have been offended to see somebody in a bathing suit or their underwear? Don't you think that they would have been mortified to see somebody in that kind of position at that point in time? But what happens from that point forward is every new show and every new commercial and every new season, they slip a little more in and they take a little more off and they cut it a little bit higher and they make it a little bit longer. Come on. And they put another dirty word in and they slip another dirty joke in. Somebody wasn't wearing nothing. And the Lord spoke to him. 
And he said there'll come a time when they have it in their own homes. Of course, in the 70s, we couldn't fathom that. Even in this area, not everybody in the 70s still had TVs at that point in time. Let alone access to cable. We still run off antennas on top of the hills. But glory to God, you can find it at a click of a button. Yes, sir. You can find it by the flip of a switch. Yes, and if you can't find it, all you got to do is either log on the internet or make a phone call and you can find it. Yes, Why? Because we're now desensitized yes. to what before was an abomination or a sin to us. Now we accept it as being normal. It's okay. Listen, I got a shocking all revelation. If it wasn't good back then. Come on. Come on. Come on. Then it ain't good now. Come on. And if it was a sin back then. Come on. Woo. Then it's a sin right now. Come on. Lord, God, we've had too much compromise. I'm getting ready to get on that tradition in a minute. Hang on. say they ain't desensitized us to nothing. <laughs> Come on. I don't know if we're going to talk about specifics or not. Come on. I want you to go back to 2000 and I want you to watch a TV show and I want you to come back to 2015 and I want you to watch a TV show and I want you to tell me the difference in what you see. I'll tell you what. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. I, I, I'll triple dog dare you, and I guarantee you one of you did it. Uh, you write down every work of the flesh that's in Galatians chapter 5, and you watch your TV for 30 minutes to an hour, and every time you see one of those sins, you put a hash mark, glory to God, by one of the, by the sin that you just heard or you just seen. And let me tell you something, if you don't think you ain't watching something that you ain't ought to be watching, glory to God. We can prove it wrong. I can't put nasty in and expect to have good come out. Amen? We were preaching last week on, on eating clean spiritually. I guess we're kind of back on that topic a little bit, and I didn't mean to be. And I know this is harder than some of that. I, I preached about four or five real good happy messages, and now this is just kick you in the teeth. But we've become desensitized that we no longer say it's wrong. Glory. Come on. Ooh, you, ought to, you might as well put your feet up because it's going to hurt. It's all right to tell white lies. I like that. I like that State Farm there. That guy called commercial says, Was Abraham Lincoln really honest? And his wife says, Honey, does this, this dress make me look big? And he says, It's just, just a little bit. White lies don't cut it, Josh. Come on. Come on. See, there ain't no difference. It's salt, salt. Pepper's pepper. The lie's a lie. Amen. Yes, White lies are okay. It's all right to cuss when I have road rage. It's all right to look at other people as long as I ain't buying off the menu. Ain't that crazy? If I'm lusting on it, I'm done in sin, period. Space, space, new sin. It's saying ain't no other way to crack it in. Amen. It, it can't be no other way, Sheila. He said, he said the way to heaven was a straight way. It's a hard way to navigate because I've got to keep myself clean from the world. Well, it's all right if I watch a little bit of bad on TV. There ain't nothing else to watch. When did watching bad stuff or mediocre bad stuff take the place of not watching any bad stuff? Come on. I mean, how did we get there? Come on. Oh, I'll tell you how we got there. We got there the same way the children of Israel did when they come out of Egypt. And old Moses went to the mountaintop to get the commandments. And he hadn't even been gone long enough to get them all chiseled out. And they said, oh, Aaron, he's done abandoned us, make us something to worship. And he took their earrings, Brother Josh, and he made them a golden calf. And before you know it, the people of God were standing before a golden calf, worshiping something that wasn't even real. And so just like this, we're like, you know what? 
God didn't really mean it that way. Divorce is okay. I can commit fornication with my whoever, and I can have this kind of relationship with whatever I want to have it with, and it'll be all right because the world says it's all right. And I'm going to tell you something. If the Word of God said it was wrong, But I gotta put it out of my body. Well, I can hate that one because I'm gonna love him over there. I don't have to forgive him. What? You don't know what I'm talking about. Oh Lord, help me. I don't have to take care of my body because I get a new one over yonder. He said it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. And I better take care of it. Both on the spiritual and on the mental and on the physical side. Glory to God. No, I ain't healthy and I ain't sitting here preaching all. Let's go out and run a mile. But now you know what I'm talking about. And see, we've got so desensitized, like I said, that we don't even notice that there's even wrong in front of us. Listen, everybody's welcome in this church house. Brother Josh, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are. I sure don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how bad of a man you are. You want to know what kind of God I serve? Charleston, South Carolina. This young white man walked into a black Bible study at that church in Charleston. He sat down with them an hour. He stood up, pulled a gun, and killed nine of them. And two days later, in the arraignment, or a day later, the families walk in, and they look at that man, and they say, we forgive you, and we love you, and as a matter of fact, won't you come back and have Bible study with us again? See, that's the kind of God that I serve. I don't preach hate. Glory to God. And I don't preach exclusion. Glory to God. But I preach an everlasting love. And if you don't have Christ, you need Him in your life. And if you got sin, you need religion. I need religion, Brother God. I ain't saying I know better. And I ain't preaching to the sinners. I'm preaching to the sick Christians inside the house of God. He said the well had no need of a physician. And we're a bunch of sick people. Because, Caleb, we've done everything that our parents told us to do. Oh, no, here we on that tradition. We've done everything our parents told us to do. I'm never late for church. That's clearly not me, but anyways. I dress up good when I go to church. Little do we know it's a little bit irrelevant. I don't use music, or I do use music. Come on. You don't talk about it. Yes, sir. Come on. I don't cut my hair, Come on. or I don't cut it this short. Come on. I don't wear this kind of clothes, or I only wear that kind of clothes. Come on. Amen? Earrings that long ain't right. Come on, my preach. What are you talking about? I don't have facial hair because of. That's the tradition of my family. I take my shoes off to preach every time I get in the pulpit. Because it's a tradition. I do it because God leads me to, but that's a family tradition. And we ain't done too bad, have we? Following our traditions? Wink, wink, what? What? Have we done have we done bad? It worked for them, didn't it? He said, Oh Josiah followed every way after the ways of David. David was a man after God's own heart. Amen. But Josiah lacked something. He had the traditions of David. Right? 
He followed after the traditions of David, and the traditions of David wasn't too bad, Brother Scott. Why? When they brought the Ark of the Covenant in, like we talked about first the service, they were ten paces, and so they stopped and killed something that sacrifice. Had church better than ten steps. Oh, David didn't do too bad, did he? But I'm going to tell you where I failed. And I'm going to tell you where we failed. And I'm going to tell you where the church failed. And it's all in the same spot. It's when that I no longer looked to the Word of God and the Spirit of God for the guidance of God and the leadership of God. But when I began to do what my daddy done and worship the way my grandpa worshiped and do it the way my denomination said do it and not the way the Word of God said do it, then we got off track. And you say, how do we got off track? How bad have we done? I'll tell you how bad we've done because we've got more denominations than I can even begin to count and every one of them's got some kind of odd belief that we look down on the board
grandfather did it and expect to get to heaven. Because Paul told me to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. What worked for Moses may not work for me. And what worked for my grandpa may not work for me. I got a lot of faith in my grandpa. He was a devout man. He was an odd booger, but he was a devout man. But I can't follow in his footsteps. Like Josiah followed in the footsteps of King David, I can't follow in those footsteps. I gotta follow in the footsteps of God. Amen. I gotta follow in the footsteps of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. You, Lord, you're gonna have to help me. You, you see, I gotta get to the point where I strip off tradition. Oh, and I'm gonna go a step harder. And I gotta get to the point where I strip off sin. I know I can't get out of the world because I got to work in it every day, Brother Josh. But I can guarantee you one thing because I work in it, don't mean I got to be a part of it. And it don't mean I got to rub it on me. And it don't mean I got to put it up my nose and wear it behind my ears. Come on, somebody out here. I ought to be able to have a love of God that will transcend the sin of the next person, the next person to me. And I ought not have to act like I'm something I'm not. Or what everybody else thought. 
about them. The disciples didn't want her to have help necessarily, Josh. They just wanted the nuisance gone. But Christ had other plans. He said, I'll prove to them boys that I'm here for more. They just know. And so we find Christ sitting how many times? Breaking bread and feeding to those that were hungry, giving to those that were not of the traditional house of Israel, or those that were not following the, the, the laws like they should have been. He surrounded himself with misfits, broken people who needed help, those that were suffering and lost, those that were sick and afflicted, lame and dying, sat at the feet of Jesus and begged to get close to Him, Bert, because He had the answers to a lost and dying world. He didn't have the traditions of the forefathers because He cursed the Pharisees and the Sadducees for condemning others. And He didn't become desensitized to the sin that was brought to Him because when He was tempted in the wilderness 40 days, He told old Satan where He could go and what He could do with it because He said, Get thee behind me, Satan. And He didn't compromise on nothing. But He showed them love. Yes, sir. He said that the old woman at the well, He said, I'll give you water to which you'll never thirst again. Said, who are you? Said, go. Tell your husband. Said, I ain't married. He said, that's right, you ain't married. Said, you've had five before, and man, you live in that now, ain't you? But you know what? You know what he told her? He didn't look down his nose. He didn't get tore up at her. He proved the point that he knew. But he said, go and sin. No more. It's the kind of God I serve, Scott. I serve the kind of God that ain't wrapped up in the traditions of my parents. Come on. And my grandparents. Come on. That condemned so many people to hell. Before that we all figured out better, including my parents. I'm not wrapped up into a situation. Which I'm not going to tell you that what you're doing is all right when what you're doing ain't all right. I don't have to like it, but I gotta love you and I gotta be good to you. And I gotta feed you the word of God. So everybody that crosses this threshold better be more than love when they come to this building. But glory to God, if you don't want to know the truth, then this ain't the place to be. Because the truth will reign in this house of God. And he said, You should know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. See, if I want to bring you to Jesus, I have no other option than to preach to you the truth. Because you see, the truth was a person. What? I said the truth was a person. In the form of Christ, truth hit the ground. Yes, sir, He lived a true life. Yes, did. And he walked among us. And they hated truth. Because truth told them what was wrong. Come on. And truth told them that tradition was wrong. Come on. And truth told them that sin was wrong. Come on. And truth told them that you couldn't live tradition and get into heaven. And you couldn't be desensitized to sin and get into heaven. But truth told them that you had to keep the straight way toward heaven. Come on. And truth told them that it was an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But he said, love your neighbor and do good to those that despitefully use you. Come on. And he said, one time and ask you again for forgiveness, then you give it. And he said, not just seven times, glory to God, but 70 times seven. In the course of a day, you forgive your brother. Come on. And they tell Spain truth, brother Josh. And so they took truth and they beat him with the whip and they stuck nails and thorns in his head and they drove nails into his hands and they hung him on a cross and they buried him in the ground because truth broke the tradition and truth sin and they didn't want truth. Come on. But truth come out of the ground in three days. Amen. Truth come out of the ground in three days. And the earth shook and the stone rolled away 
and the guards turned pale. And undoubtedly their knees shook and they hid because they were scared because truth can walk out of the ground. Because the truth will stand when nothing else does. That old truth climbed up on a cloud and ascended on up into heaven and he sits on the right hand of the Father making intercession for the saints. Amen. Truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Come on. See, if I'm going to preach Jesus, then I've got to preach the truth. I don't have to preach it in a condemning way because most people know they're lost already, Josh. And if they come through those doors, most people's already looking for an answer. Most people's already looking for a fix to the problems in their lives. But I need to tell them the truth. Sometimes we got to line us Christians out like this right here. And on occasion, we got to lay this down to the sinners. It's all right. Christ never spared them. But they always knew He loved them. They always knew that He loved them. I don't have to tell you that I hate you. I don't have to tell you that you're going to hell. I just got to tell you that God loves you. And there's a difference between right and wrong. When they walk in this building, they've got to be able to find truth. Because truth is the answer. But see, Christ was more than truth. Christ was peace. Christ was love. And Christ was salvation. And just like the, just like the truth walked the earth, so did love, peace, truth, and salvation. And just like they put truth in the ground, they did the same thing to the rest of those. And just like it come out of the ground, so did the rest of those things. And if I'm going to preach you truth, I can't just tell you right from wrong. I've got to tell you about salvation, and I've got to tell you about freedom, and I've got to tell you about deliverance, and I've got to tell you about a peace that surpasses all understanding. Amen? I can't leave none of it out. See, that's where tradition comes in because tradition wants to leave out parts. It wants to put emphasis on some parts over the other, but truth is a well-balanced thing. Proverbs 11, 1 says the Lord loves a just balance, but a false weight is an abomination to him. Think about that. Who was preaching on last night? See, truth just says, I can't tell you that you're going to heaven or hell, but truth says, I'm going to love you. Amen. Truth says, I've got to hug you when you hurt. See, we got to get rid of tradition. And we got to get rid of desensitization because it's time as the saints of God that we clean our lives up when we start living according to the Word of God. Yes. That's the last thing i got to tell you. You see, old Josiah knew what he knew to do. But he'd never read the law of God. Sister Andrew, but when he read the law of God, he began to find all kinds of things. Oh. That's the reason Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Because, Brother Bert, I've got to get in here and I've got to read it for myself. I can preach to you from the front to the back, but until that you get a personal relationship with God, until that you begin to read the Word of God, Come on. then you ain't got nothing. Right. And old Josiah was doing what he knew to do, and he probably thought he was doing pretty good. Amen. You ever thought you were doing pretty good? I've had those times I thought, man, you got it together, Sean. Yeah. Doing pretty good. Our pastor down at Oak Black, Brother Greg Roberts, get preaching. He'd stop. Middle of preaching. He'd reach over and go, pretty good preaching, Greg. Pretty good preaching. Give us that pat on the back. Just keep right on. See, we do that. We say, yeah, man, we got this under but are we living to the standard? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Or am I living on the bell curve of modern Christians? The bell curve of sin? Or am I living according to the righteousness of God? Yes, sir. And see, until I, Josiah, I get in here and I start to read this for myself, then I can't make, break the traditions of men. And I can't fully desensitize myself from the world. Can you say amen? Amen. Until I get this for myself, 
Until I get this for myself, Scott, I can't break all the traditions of men and I can't desensitize myself to all the things that I need to be away from. I guess the proper way to say that is I need to resensitize myself to all the things that I've been desensitized to. That'd be the better way to say that. Y'all know what I was going to think. But i got to read it for myself, Sheila. I can't read it for nobody else. I begin to rely on people down in Alabama and I... I mentioned this the other day, and I would call home, and I would say, where's this at? And they'd go, I don't know. And I'd say, how in the world do you not know where it's at? Well, it's in there. I don't care that it's in there. I want to know where it's at. So I begin to have to find it for myself. And now I can tell you what I believe. I can tell you why I believe it, why I ain't scared to stand on it. Amen? And it ain't because of no tradition of being. It's because it's the Word of God. But until then, we're never going to get resensitized. And we're never going to get away from tradition until we start. We've got to clean ourselves at church. And you know what? Josiah realized that he was in trouble. Oh, Lord. Shut up. Use it Josiah realized that he was in trouble, but not only was he in trouble, he realized as the leader of the country, the whole country was in trouble. And he went, oh no. What are we going to do? And he said, boys, you've got to go down and talk to that prophetess. She's the only one I know that will get an answer from God. And so they went down there and they talked to her. And she said around the back way, she said, you goose has done cooked, son. You all messed around too long. You say, how's that apply to us? I'm not saying there can't be what some people call a third great awakening in the United States of America. First one's happened in the late 1700s, and the next one happened in the early 1900s. There was mass revival in this country. Yeah. Thousands upon thousands of people came to the throne of God. Yes. Turned from their wicked ways. Every nation that turns from God will be cast into hell. But we have done two things, church, that they were guilty of right there with Josiah. And we got desensitized to things that were sin. And we have allowed sin to go on, not only in the lives around us, but in our lives. Personally, our lives way too long. And we wrapped up in the traditions of man. And we see our churches closing, people backsliding, denominations on a continual decline around the country. We are raising up a generation of children that don't even believe in God. Come on. Say, are we really? Yes, we are. How do you know? I talk to them on a weekly and daily basis sometimes. I mean, he's been youth leader for a while, and it is amazing the mindset that these people have. You think about that. Come on. And then you ask yourself, why? Because like Josiah, we've done what we thought we were supposed to do without ever really knowing what we were supposed to do. Somebody ought to get a hold of that. We were doing what we thought we were supposed to do without ever knowing what we really were supposed to do. So in closing, in closing, as Mark gets ready to get a song, Josh is getting ready to give the altar call. We need to be like Jesus. And when they come in the door, instead of going, that's a sin. And that's the same. We need to say hi. I love you. And when them tears will open the corner of that eye, Paul said something along these lines. This is a paraphrase. He said, but when one hurts, we all hurt. And when one rejoices, we all rejoice. Come on. And when that tear begins to well up in their eye, I ought not care whether they've had a bath. I ought not care what kind of clothes they got on. Come on. I ought not care what their background is, what their rap sheet is. I ought not care what their home life is or what they're blown out of their minds on. The only thing that should matter to me is that there's a God in heaven with an outstretched arm, Brother Josh, that's welcome to me to the throne of God. And when that tear raises up in their eye, I ought to reach out my hands and say, come on, child, come on in. And I ought to wrap my arms around them and I ought to love them and I ought to cry every bit as hard as they cry. And I ought to rejoice every bit as hard as they rejoice.
can somebody say amen to this? Amen. Josiah stood and ran his clothes because he realized he had failed. I've got people in Alabama who are listening to these messages. I've had people as far away as Ecuador listen to this. And this ain't a call just to this house tonight. This ain't just a call to Frogtown and a call to ICOG. But it's a call to the world. It's a call to every house of God, wherever the saint of God is. For them to say, let's check yourselves. Stand up and rent your clothes and say, God, I failed. God, I've walked in tradition, but I've not walked in Christ. I've, I've desensitized myself to every filthy and ungodly thing. And Lord, I failed by not telling people the truth. And I failed by not showing them love. It's a call to us to check our own lives. Because my life as a Christian is not passive. I do not get to hold down a pew and ride into heaven. But i got to live it to everybody that I come in contact with. And everybody that God gives me the opportunity, Sister Beth, I gotta bring them or try to bring them into the throne of God. Come on, bro. Amen, Andrew. Amen. 